Hi Figmates, welcome back to Figma Atelier. I am Yanis Mesny, Aka Fox, and today we'll make a walkthrough of my last experiment, how to get jeans in Figma, inspired by the TV show Arkane, made by Fortish and Riot Games. So let's go to the prototype and see how I have done it. Okay guys, so let's analyze a bit what I have done here. So I've done three things with After Effects, and we will see the first thing that I've done was this kind of noisy texture here that I animated inside the software and then I export it as a transparent GIF. Then we have this kind of bokeh effect here, this little blue light that I animated also with the software and export it as a transparent GIF. The third thing that I've done with After Effects is this kind of pinky light and also the texture on top of the face of Jinx that I exported also as a transparent GIF. And for the rest of the illustration and the animation, I've done that inside Figma. So the first thing that I've animated inside Figma was the air of Jinx here that are moving accordingly to the wind. Then I animated the eyes of Jinx following the cursor, as you can see. Then the last thing I animated was this kind of scratchy doodles. But let's go inside the Fima files and see deeper what I've done. Okay, so let's start by the illustration. So that's the original one from the studio Fortish. So as you can see, there is uh, many details into it. You can see uh, this uh, brush texture that was not easy to reproduce and also the freckles and many different uh, gradients inside the hair and on your mouse. So I spent nine hours to reproduce illustration. Not perfect, it's not the best of it, but uh, I tried my best. So the first thing that I've done here on the master is uh, I split all the parts of our body, like that. So we have the background here, then we have our ear, and here, the body, the head. And on the head, for example, we go inside the, the frame, we have here, try to remember where it was, our body. Now that's a body on our head here. We have this light on our side. And for that, I use a mask. So that's a mask of her head. And with the light, this, what's this one? It's this one. What I've done is that I use Layer blur to create this light uh, effect, and after that, I've done that uh, for all the part of the body. So yeah, many different layers as you can see. So let's put that back. Uh, I split the left part of her hair. I will explain it a bit later, and also the eyes, and that's actually the prototype. So that's a part of the illustration. But uh, the prototype is uh, the place where all the animation, uh, uh, or everything is animated. And um, so let's start with the hair. What I've done here is that uh, I have split all the different parts of her hair, like that. And instead of making a rotation of uh, the full frame of the hair. I use a uh, anchor point, so invisible um, anchor point, and the size of the frame of different part of the hair are actually the size of the anchor point. So when I rotate the hair, it makes this uh, windy animation on her hair. It actually just uh, moves uh, the top of it. So that's a way to do it uh, when because there is no anchor point inside Figma. And 
Uh, for that, I've done two states. So I've just rotate a little bit um, some part of her of her hair here. So it's really soft. You can see, but I didn't want to make too much uh, too, too strong animation on that. And what happened is that when you go to the first state, to the second state, we have here an after delay of one milliseconds, and you change to the second state with smart animate and two seconds. And for the second state here, same thing. We have an after delay here of one millisecond, and change to the first state, smart animate, two seconds. So that's how I animated the hair. Uh, for the eyes, it's a little bit different. Uh, it's a bit more complex. So I just made the different uh, here, um, different uh, let's say uh, movement of the eyes. And um, as you can see here, there is uh, many of it, accordingly to the place where the cursor will be. And for that. Zoom a little bit. Um, I use uh, invisible button, and I call them uh, accordingly to the different states of the variant of the eyes. And when the mouse enter in this area, it's like that. Mouse enter. It change to the state bot right with smart animate and 300 ms. And then we go to the here, to the bot right variant of the eyes here. Okay, sorry, too much, uh, too much uh, interaction here. So it looks like that. Too much uh, interaction noodles. A lot of interaction noodles for these eyes. And uh, I've done that with uh, all the different uh, uh, visible button. And every time the mouse enter here or here, it go to the variant. Or if I go to the top, it go to the top variant. And same thing here. Invisible button. When you go to the bot right, it go to the bot right, like that. So that's how I animated the the eyes, to be honest. And um, I animated also some scratchy doodles here, as you can see. So this one with a monster and this one with a cross. And for that, really, when you go inside here, so it's here and here, there are instances of another variant. The variant is actually here. So what happened is that um, when we are on these doodles, um, it animated like that with uh, and after delay of one milliseconds, it changed to the second state, this one. And when we are on the second state here, move to the third state with the same value. So one milliseconds, change to state three, and using Smart Animate, 40 milliseconds. And at the start, it's really huge, then it's small, then it's invisible, and then it looked back to the first one. So that's how I animated the doodles. And I use the same process with the cross. And after that, as a Russian puppet, I put that inside this variant here. So when she's looking at the right, her eyes is changing color and the doodles here appears. And thing here on the top and here on the bottom uh, right. And it worked exactly as a Russian Puppet, and uh, so this inst this uh, <coughs> variant, we have an instance inside this other variant, and it goes. And I I take this one, and I put that into my prototype here. And uh, as I told you at the start, we have also on the prototype here a noise effect, so it's just a transparent GIF here okay and we have also a vignette here just to make it a bit more dramatic 
And for the light, um, instead of putting that here, because it will animate it all the time, I put that as a doodles. So when you go inside this one, this one, or this one, three here, we have here, so it's not visible uh, on the map file, but on the prototype, as you have seen before, we have this uh, bokeh effect and also this pink light effect with this grungy texture. And it's actually just uh, a GIF that I put in with this uh, screen uh, um, effect here. So yeah, so that's how I've done um, the light effect. So when we are at the bottom, if I remember, it's a bokeh effect here. So I open here. So yeah, the bokeh is here. Okay. And with the screen and the GIF. Thank you guys to follow my little walkthrough of how to get Jinx in Figma. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want, you can follow me on Twitter here or also Instagram. You can subscribe to my Figma profile on the Figma community, it's Figma Atelier. And of course, if you want, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys, see you soon.